With great data comes great responsibility. What's funny about that is obviously it's a reference to Spider-Man and it's not my reference either. So if you're in the DOD or public sector sales arena and you do anything that has to do with data, I highly advise you to check out AFSIA. Um, they're an organization that puts out a magazine called Signal. And in this month, and it's January of 2023, Abraham Yee, who's a senior account executive for the Army, has kind of a funny fake quote, right? So it basically says, with great power, uh, with great data comes great responsibility, and attributes it to Spider-Man. And then he goes on to correct himself and say, hey, well, after fact-checking, it's, it's with great power. But um, what's funny about that is how important data is right now to the US military. And I wanted to get into an episode that just talks about data in general. So whether you have a system that is transmitting data, you know, whether you're involved in that, whether you are uh, processing data, trying to understand it with, you know, a, a product that you might have, or if you just have an application, a user interface, any type of software suite that is going to use data Basically, if you have anything that is going to connect to a government system, especially U.S. military, so I'd like to keep it with the military, but if it's going to connect to any system, any hardware that's owned by the military, and you're moving data around, there's some things you need to be aware of, and we'll, we'll talk about those, and then just how important it is to understand the vast amounts of data that are out there. So thinking about all of the weapon systems that we have, and then thinking about all of just the, the data lakes and databases that are in the different services that either aren't connected to each other, or even if they are, how do you understand that those vast amounts of data? All right, so there are a few efforts right now, big picture efforts. One's called JADC2, uh, it's, that's an acronym. Um, and the other one is ABMS. So ABMS, stands for uh, Advanced Battle Management System. And, you know, the history of ABMS, you know, it started as a program that would replace um, certain aircraft that we have, command and control aircraft in the air. But and um, it kind of morphed into how do we connect all of the information? How do we take all of the information out there? Whether it's information that is um, picked up by sensors, whether it is data that's worked on by analysts. All of the different data sets that could apply to command and control of the air and get that the right information in front of the right user, right? So that could be an air battle manager, which is essentially an operator, somebody that would be out deployed, that would be um, involved with directing where aircraft go, coordinating between troops, things like that. There is all, There are also strategic implications, right? So there are senior leaders that need certain amounts of information. They, they're going to need different information than the warfighter is going to need. This applies to way more than just aircraft and command and control um, as it applies to, you know, aerial battles and, and moving aircraft around. This applies to everything, right? So JADC2 is kind of the overarching, and that stands for Joint All Domain Command and Control. And it's supposed to cover all of the services, right? And each of the services have something like ABMS where they're working on their own version of JADC2. But big picture, what we want to do is take all of the data and we're making more and more data every day. Um, that same Signal Magazine article uh, that I was reading said that um, 74 zettabytes is uh, the total data in the world by the end of 2021. And they're quoting some... Uh, statistics within there. And there are other statistics too, but their main point is that the amount of data is increasing every day that we're producing. And a lot of it, we're not going to need, right? I mean, the problem is how do we search through all of that data and get the right piece of information and get it to the right user? And that could be a general uh, or, or a colonel that is making decisions strategically um, or, or even tactically, but for a lot of people, and it could be for the operator. And that's kind of the example I gave at the beginning. So we need to get the right information in front of the right user. And there are a ton of businesses now that are focusing just on these problem sets. And by the way, these problem sets, if you've listened to the podcast, 
you're not just solving problems for the U.S. military and the DOD. You're solving problems commercially, too, because obviously we're creating a ton of data commercially. So a lot of the solutions that are being developed through things like SBIR and STTR and different OTAs and, and regular, I guess, more traditional contracting means, a lot of these are going to have dual use applications. So what if you find yourself in the bucket? I know I'm being broad, but there's so many different things we could be talking about. We could talk, we could be talking about cybersecurity. We could be talking about IT or OT. We could be talking about uh, you know, if you're building, if you're building sensors, if you are transmitting data on small devices or large devices, you could be in satellite. I mean, there are so many different that you could be a user interface developer or an application developer. But a couple of things to be aware of: if you have a product or solution that you think would be perfect for the military, when you sell something to the military, if it's going to connect to any of the government systems. Typically, what we need is something called uh, an ATO, which is uh, an acronym, again, for, and it stands for Approval to Operate. So if you hear ATO, it stands for Approval to Operate. And that basically means, and it was the big, it was the big thing when I was in as an acquisitions officer, it's big now, in order for the government to connect your thing to their system, whatever system that might be, they need something called an ATO, an Approval to Operate. There are always exceptions to this, but big picture. And in order to get that approval to operate, you are going to have to have a lot of different cyber security requirements in place to ensure that you're meeting um, the security of the system. Security is a huge deal for the government. So we want to make sure they're not just hooking anything up to their systems. They want to make sure that you know they've been uh, validated, that they have the right security measures in place, that they've been tested. So uh, there's there are quite a few things that go into that ATO. Now, there are a couple of programs out there that I would urge you to uh, take a look at. One of them is called FedRAMP. Now, some of you may have heard of FedRAMP before. I've had people on the show talk about FedRAMP. And uh, it stands for uh, the Federal Risk and Authorization Management Program. Uh, you can go to the website, fedramp.gov. Um, and it basically says that FedRAMP provides a standardized approach to security authorizations for cloud service offerings. Now, if you are interested in that, I mean, I would go to the website and check it out if you have anything that you think, you know, would, uh, you know, be in line with what we've discussed so far. And it has a, a chart there that talks about, um, you know, the agency process uh, for going through FedRAMP authorization. And you can go through the, an agency, and an agency, you know, you can go through the DOD, you can go through the Air Force, you can go through, you know, Navy, Army, or you can go through the Joint Authorizations Board, which their acronym for that is JAB. So the basic process for that is uh, you select an authorization path, there's a uh, preparation uh, phase, which, and by the way, I'm just on the website, just reading right through the chart. There's a readiness assessment. There's a pre-authorization. Then you go into the authorization phase where there's a full security assessment, agency authorization process, and then continuous monitoring. So what is the readiness assessment? Well, you know, according to the website, this is... Um, you know, to achieve the FedRAMP ready designation, you have to work with a third party organization to complete a readiness assessment of your service offering. And uh, they're going to take a look at your uh, capability to meet federal security requirements. So without, I'm not going to read the list of security um, requirements, but that's essentially what that is. With uh, the pre-authorization, you will uh, formalize a partnership with an agency um, in the FedRAMP marketplace. Um, and you they are looking at a few things here. They have some bullet points, but uh, looking at a system that's fully built and functional, that's a quote. Uh, you know, they're looking to make sure that you're committed and on board with the FedRAMP process. Um, there's an intake process. Um, and then there's a determination for your security categorization. Uh, categorization. I know I'm saying that wrong. Categorization. Um, 
and then there's a kickoff meeting and there's some other things as well in there. Uh, going through the authorization process, there's a security assessment and then there's an agency authorization process. I'm glossing over that. That could take a while. And then, you know, in the, well, here, they have a step here about the agency authorization process. And they conduct a security authorization package review um, where they are going through the different details and ensuring uh, that going through risk analysis and everything else, you meet all the requirements so they can issue an ATO. And we talked about that already, which is your approval to operate. I don't want to make FedRAMP sound easy. You know, this is a decision you need to make as a business if you're going to make the investment of going through FedRAMP. And by the way, there are some other th places you can uh, check out here too, as far as cybersecurity requirements. I would uh, Google CMMC. I would Google um, Platform One, which is... Uh, Essentially, I want to say that's with the Air Force. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn here. But uh, uh, let's see, Modern Ever Era DevSecOp Pipeline. So you can go to, uh, it, I would just type in Platform One into Google. It's going to bring it up here. And you'll know you're in the right place because there's, um, there's a badge on the front and there's a little character that looks like a baby Yoda in um, a platform one badge, but <clears throat> basically says under platform one, this allows users to deploy a DevSecOps software factory and start solving software problems with a 90% solution day one instead of starting from nothing. I would go to the website and read through that as well. And it looks like they also have some dates for um, upcoming sessions where they uh, will brief you on kind of what they're doing, what the process looks like. So uh, looking at that, I think will help. So there are a lot of requirements if you are doing anything with data, but it's a huge, huge area. Uh, every conference I've been to lately is focused on data. How do we solve their various data related problems? So if you're looking for a niche, if you're looking for an area to focus, I would start reading. Uh, I would go, I'd get your AFCA. And by the way, I don't get a, I don't get a piece of this. I'm an AFCA member. So, but I do get the Signal Magazine. Reading that is going to help you understand where the military is at. So that's kind of step one is if you're just getting started, uh, maybe taking a look at Signal Magazine, um, looking at FCA is going to give you uh, some good big picture ideas of where the military is headed as far as data is concerned. And then I would go to the Platform One website and the FedRAMP website and start looking at some of the security requirements. And then if you're overwhelmed or uh, with any of that, I would say that a good place to start you know, if you're just starting, you don't have the requirements in place, you just have maybe a solution that you're building out, take a look at the SBIR program because you may be able to, it's going to get your foot in the door because you can do a lot of uh, demo and test projects that way where you may not need an ATO or, you know, some of the more advanced security requirements right away. And I'm not going to speak for all, every Cibber is a little bit different. You can go to Cibber.gov to look at some of those opportunities, but a lot of companies get their foot in the door that way. They can and they can see that there's a government need for what they have before they start investing in things like the FedRAMP process. So uh, I'm a big believer in making sure that before you make a huge investment, we see that there's a need and there's funding available to, um, you know, to build out whatever the technological solution is that you have um, and to potentially go on contract with the government. It'd be great if you can get that contract initially ahead of time, right, to help kind of build out a prototype and, and test it out. And then as you're seeing that there's a need and there's a future for what you're building within the DOD, now you can start looking at, you know, some of these more advanced like FedRAMP and some of these processes. So anyway, those are just my thoughts. Uh, take a look. Take a look at the, the programs that are available. Let me know in the comments or you can go to dodcontract.com if, you know, you have any suggestions on future episodes. Uh, I'll cover, you know, whatever you guys are interested in. Don't forget to subscribe to the episode. Don't forget to leave a comment. Those always helps. And we have plenty of programs at dodcontract.com that we've helped many, many clients with SBIR, with things like FedRAMP and Platform One. If we can't do it, we'll point you in the right direction uh, and give you to a subject matter expert that can do some of that. Um, you know, everything from, we have a great uh, interview coming up with former Colonel Orndorff, I should say retired. Uh, he's been on before, he used 30 years as a contracting officer. He has an amazing level of knowledge as it comes to contracts. He talks a little bit about you know, reviewing 
RFPs and proposals for RFPs and making sure we're hitting the nuance of what the, the CEO is looking for. He talks, gives a lot of great tips and advice too on uh, contracting, what to do when you get stuck or if you're, if you have a problem. So uh, that episode will be coming out shortly. So keep an eye out for that. Head over to dodcontract.com and we will see you next time.